And now we've come to that time in our service where I get to introduce our speaker for the morning. On this, our Heroes Weekend, I am sure that he's here to bring a message that will inspire, that will continue to uplift, and most importantly, that will help us to move forward in this journey as a community. So please help me to welcome to our podium, our speaker, our beloved, our pastor, Reverend John Scott, the beloved. Welcome, Reverend John. Good morning, family. Good morning, world. Good morning, God. Praise to the Lord. And you know, when you see that word Lord in the Bible, you can, you can substitute the word law. Praise to the law because it governs everything and we live by that law. It is, it is perfect and impersonal. And once we know how to use it, it works in our lives and in our affairs to the honor and glory of that which created all things out of itself. So good morning to, and welcome to the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living in beautiful Jamaica. It is my joy to speak with you this morning on something that has been in my heart, but it's particularly, I think, relevant on this weekend in which, in which Jamaica celebrates its national heroes. Because you have what it takes. You. Next time you look in the mirror, just say this to yourself. I have what it takes to be a hero. Can we say that together? I have what it takes to be a hero. You know, for a relatively small and very young nation, we have produced sons and daughters who have excelled in every sphere of human endeavor, and our people have impacted the world in ways that are entirely out of proportion with our size. No? Absolutely. Just take one of our six national heroes, the most honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey. Born in St. Anne's Bay in 1887, in his short 52-year lifespan, he became one of the world's most influential leaders. His brilliant oratory, his grasp of philosophy, and his newspaper, Negro World, founded in 1920, brought him millions of followers all over the world. Actually, legend has it that Garvey's organization was and remains the largest international organization of all times. Those of us who claim Jamaica as home can truly pride ourselves in the dialect pun, Jamaica. Ja, the king of kings, the Lord, created us out of itself in the image and likeness of its beauty and its love and its joy and its wonder and amazement. And when Jamaica is your home, either because you live here or because your heart is here, there is something special that happens inside of you. And I'm not quite sure what it is. You know, there are Jamaicans who have been abroad for years and years and years. And they say, you know, I'm coming home one day and if I make the transition and leave this plane, physical plane, bring home the body, they want Part of us never leaves this little island. Part of us is really here full time. Garvey wrote, and I quote, a people without the knowledge of their past history, origin, and culture is like a tree without roots. And you know what happens when a tree doesn't have very, very deep roots. Unquote. You see, Garvey's passion and purpose was to change the consciousness of people. And so I think he would be resonating with what we are doing right now in working at looking at our own movement, the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living and this, the Centers for, Centers for Spiritual Living movement generally. 
as, as, as what our role is in a transforming world. Because Garvey, and in fact all of the heroes that I can think of throughout the ages, have been about transformation. So I've titled, so I've titled my encouragement as I started, You Have What It Takes to Be a Hero. Mariah, Car uh, uh, Mariah Carey, in her beautiful song, Hero, reminds us, and I quote, and then a hero comes along, I won't sing it, with the strength to carry on. And you cast your fears aside, and you know you can survive. So when you feel like hope is gone, look inside you and be strong. And you'll finally see the truth that a hero lies in you, end of quote. Yes, friends, a hero lies in you, in each of us. You have what it takes to be a hero. We may not all be powerful orators capable of capturing the attention of others and inspiring millions, as Garvey did, to reach for greatness, but we are all able to draw on the inner power and guidance of God. And so, you know, when Jesus was asked about his healing power, he replied that he of himself really didn't do anything. It was the Father within him, the power within him that he called Father, the same power that is within each and every one of us. It is that power and that law that we praise this morning in our hymn that does the work. The Sufi mystics believe that there are two sources of power we can tap. The first is a physical source located in our adrenal glands. This is the fight or flight uh, system wired into us, which can give a mother the strength to lift a truck off her, her, her child, or uh, it, it just is that energy. You know, you, you get it sometimes when you need to get the house in order because your mother-in-law has just phoned to say she's on her way over. And you, you move like lightning to get everything in order and to get yourself ready so you are presentable and looking, looking wonderful before she arrives. It's that, it's that energy. Um, you know, it fires you up and you can accomplish things. But all of us know if you draw on, the, on that energy too often, you can suffer from burnout. It's, it's, not a, it's not good to live at that level of vibration permanently. But the second source of energy is non-physical. And that source, my friends, is spiritual. It doesn't take anything out of you. When you call on it, it is even mightier than the adrenal force, but it doesn't deplete you. You can't deplete it. My, a New Thought author, Joan Borisenko, says of this, this power within us that we can call on, and I quote, like the sun that rises in the east, it is renewed each day. It can't run out, and you can't burn out, unquote. She notes further that the most important factor in becoming a channel of divine energy, and this, I found this very interesting, the most important factor in becoming a, 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 a a channel, I like the word channel because it means that it's flowing through you for this energy. That factor is humility. And so I like to think of myself as a humble hero. A hero that looks for the hero in other people. A hero that sees beyond human frailty and human foibles and human mistakes to the truth of every person we meet. And when you have that humility within you, you think, wow. You know, at the prison at Tower Street, one of the warders said to one of my classes, you know, I'm doing time with you. Yeah, I'm in here with you. And it just made the whole class warm to him in a way that uh, people who are incarcerated don't normally warm to those who are responsible for keeping them in prison. So why is humility such an important aspect of your hero's journey then? Humility may be defined as the absence of pride, and pride in turn can be construed to mean an inflated opinion of oneself. 
conceit, if you prefer. I often tell this story, and I've told you before, of an early lesson I had in humility and the danger of pride. I was 10, and I had just received a much wanted bicycle. And one of the few things I could do at age 10, better than my brother age 14, was ride with no hands, you know? hands off the hand, uh, handlebars. So I was whizzing up and down the driveway, no hands, while my brother, who couldn't give a, ho a hoot, was seated on the veranda with our blind grandmother reading the Bible to her. And as I hit the bottom of the driveway, thank God I was out of sight of them. The blasted bicycle skid in some sand, and I, in Jamaica, we, when you do us over, uh, overhead, we say, we kin popalik, a kin popalik and crepe up the hole of my knee. So, you know, I dusted off my bruised pride and thanking God that they, was, they never saw me, you know. And as I was passing, <laughs> remember, grandmother was, 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 was uh, quite unable to see. She said dryly, and I quote, Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. End quote. Tell me how the devil she knew that I had just dropped. And my brother intoned in his most professorial and tentorian voice, Proverbs 16, verse 18. Now, I didn't know much about one mind at those times, but it is quite ironic that the very verse that he was reading from, that he quoted, referred to my mishap. And I just thought, yeah, even at that young age, don't, as we say in Jamaica now, don't big up yourself and to make yourself look better or bigger or nicer or brighter than anyone else. So I'm reminded of an old Russian fable that tells of an infamous robber who was a master of disguise. And he managed to elude the police for many, many years through the use of very elaborate disguises. His latest one was, was that of a, 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 an Orthodox priest. But he got word that the police were closing in. They were, on to, they were on to his latest disguise. And so he was, you know, looking to find a way to escape. And he came upon an inn where there was a peasant who was in a drunken stupor. Quite drunk, he had had too much vodka and was flat out. And so the robber changed his prelate's robes for the peasant's garb and left him there in a drunken stupor and went on his way, again evading the police. In the morning when the peasant awoke, he was kind of puzzled to find himself wearing a priest's robes. And he thought to himself, either I'm a peasant and the fact that I'm wearing a priest's robe is a terrible mistake. Or I have somehow, I can't remember being a, pe a, a, a peasant, and it's really just a, a bad dream. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the, the, to the church, to the cathedral, and I'm going to look at the holy books. And if I can read them, I will know I am a priest. And if I can't, I'll know I'm a peasant. So he went down to the church and opened the holy books and, of course, couldn't read a thing. So he said, hmm, I know. I really am a priest. You see, the fact that I can't read the holy books, well, the other priests can't read it either. They just pretend. So I'll pretend that I'm a priest too. My friends, the teaching known as the science of mind and spirit eliminates the need for pretense and leads us to the recognition of our true nature. And that cannot be hidden or disguised by the masks that we are obliged to wear um, in this particular time. Because your divinity, the truth of your being, shines through you, no matter what you are wearing, and no matter how, what you are doing. When you are being the divine being that you are, it must shine through and bless and touch 
and inspire and uplift everyone with whom you come into contact. So as we seek to uncover the hero within, it is critical that we become aware of this true self. Raymond Charles Barker, one of the first New Thought writers to whom I was exposed, explains it this way, and I quote, your consciousness, your thinking, feeling process of life is what you are. You did not create it, nor can you stop it. You are it. You are consciousness. So I like to put in the word state. Life is a state of consciousness. And therefore, one has to look inside oneself, as Mariah Carey said. You will find the hero, and behind that hero, or within that hero, you will find the consciousness the consciousness of humility, the consciousness of love, the consciousness of service, the consciousness of selflessness, the consciousness of being a light for God in the world. Let us affirm, I have the consciousness of the divine presence within me. Together, I have the consciousness of the divine presence within me. Yesterday at our pre-summit meeting, after a few technical glitches with connectivity, we had a meaningful conversation and drew some important conclusions regarding our core values, vision, and mission. We want everyone who has ever been touched by the Temple of Light to be part of the spiritual exercise which we have dubbed Summit 2020. So your assignment is to register if you haven't already done so for October 30 and 31st and November 7 and 8. 6 and 7, thank you. November 6 and 7. If you have already registered, yay, well done. Now don't forget to join us for our opening ceremony at 3 p.m. on October 30th. And all this week, the other part of your assignment is Set your intention to see the hero in everyone you meet, even if they are not evidencing the divine potential that you know is within them. For there is always that within each person that is greater, that is more beautiful and more joyous than the mistakes they have made. I found that this has been a big lesson for me in the, in, the, in the program that we have run for the past eight years at the prison. That Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life program really is a template for change, <laughs> for transformation, to use the word. And Jennifer used it in her, in her um, inspirational reading this morning, too, from the Santa Man magazine, Let Us Be Transformed. St. Paul said, Be You Renewed by what? the transforming of your mind. So this, this, this business of transformation is really in the forefront of my mind, and I'm hoping that you will give it some thought too. Butterworth cites the case of an ex-convict who in his rediscovered self chose to be known as Alva Romanes. He had gone astray early in life, living many years on the shady side of the law, and ended up serving a long stretch in prison. Like many of the participants in our program, which has now been interrupted by the pandemic, but I know it is, it's going to resume, and I know that we have touched many, many, many lives, and many lives have been transformed by the work that we have done in the male and the female prisons. So Roma, Romanes put some, his feeling, some of his feelings into poetry. And Butterworth notes, he says it's not great poetry, but the ideas contained in it are divine and are so beautiful. And so I'd like to share this poem with you, written in the hopeless atmosphere of a cell block. I am not the brood of the dust and sod, nor a shuttled thread in the loom of fate, but the child divine of the living God, with eternity for my life's estate. I am not the sport of a cosmic night, nor a thing of chance that has grown to man. I am not 
but a deathless soul on my upward flight and my father's heir in his wondrous plan. As I weigh the suns on the rim of space, who can care to doubt of my destiny? Who can fence my feet within time and space as I search the worlds of infinity? I am man, the son of the one most high. I am man and one with the life divine. I am Lord of earth and of sea and sky, and behold the powers of heaven are mine. I am man the chosen and man the free, and it matters not what I may have been, for I walk erect through eternity to the far off goal that is yet unseen. With unswerving faith on the coming day, I have, I have turned my course from the things of time. And with Jesus, my brother, to point the way, I have found my place in the life sublime. End of that poem. As some would say, this man is a, is a criminal. I wonder about him and about many of the inmates who have blessed me with their insight and creativity and love. Did his soul, I wonder, choose the experience? You know, life, I think, prepares us for itself. You know, would, would Paul have, have been the, the, the founder of Christianity and if he had not first started off as a persecutor of Christians? We never know, my friends, what plan, what life plan we have made, perhaps even before we came to this plane for how we are going to work out and rediscover the destiny, the divinity, and the delight of living that was meant to be. Perhaps sometimes we choose a rocky road. Sometimes the journey is easier for some than for some. But all of us are on a journey. And I think when I think of the metaphor of, of the summit and climbing the mountain, I remind myself that mountaineers, as they seek to reach the peak experience of their quest, they are tethered together for safety. And so as a community, I see ourselves being tethered together by the divine love that created each and every one of us out of itself and that sustains us in its own perfection at our levels of unfoldment and understanding. In his magnum opus, The Science of Mind, Ernest Holmes writes, and I quote, there is hidden within the mind of man a divinity. There is incarnated in you and me that is, which is an incarnation of God. There is no revelation higher than the realization of the divinity within us. Let us affirm I am a spiritual being, a hero whole and free, together. I am a spiritual being, a hero whole and free. I am the master of my destiny. I am the master of my destiny. To your neighbor say, you are a spiritual being and a hero whole and free. Happy Heroes Day. You are a spiritual being, a hero whole and free. Happy Heroes Day. My friends, you are each and every one of you a radiant and beautiful and joyful spiritual being. You are the master of your destiny. You are the stuff of which heroes is made. I revere you, I love you, I honor you on this Heroes Weekend when Jamaica celebrates all those upon whom, whose shoulders we stand. Happy Heroes Day and Namaste.